In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to improve your positional play tremendously just by using one small detail. I often mention in my lessons that you should always pick a point on the table for the cue ball to end when playing position, because that way you have a larger margin for error on the table. For example here, we are picking this point for the cue ball to end. If the cue ball now misses the point on the table, we still have this area around the point for the cue ball to end. And the cue ball ended up perfectly. But as you see in this example, speed control still is a big factor. At least I should have ensured that if my speed control is off, that I hit too hard to give myself a higher chance for a position. But today I'm going to show you a different approach that will make positional play a lot easier for every player not bound to their current skill level. Everyone can and should do this in certain situations. We are going to use rails, but what have rails to do with positional play? Let me show you some examples and their advantages. But before we are going into the examples, I want to show you an excerpt from our previous lesson because it's very important to understand that principle before watching this lesson. If you already know about that, you can fast forward to 350. The most important thing when playing position is to understand where the cue ball does travel naturally if you don't do something special with the cue ball. And you see the cue ball will somehow travel along this path, maybe miss the 6 or hit the 6, so that's not good. Now we're looking where we can hit that first rail and we see it's in this area. All we have to think now is where do we want to hit the first rail and where do we want to hit the second rail. And then we can finish the path of the cue ball in our imagination. We can manipulate the contact point on the first rail by hitting high or low on the cue ball. And the contact point on the second rail can be manipulated by hitting left or right English. And as you see, after hitting these two rails, it's only a matter of speed, because then we cannot change the path of the cue ball. So we can manipulate the path of the cue ball with the first two rails. In this example, the natural contact point on the first rail is very easy to see. We could manipulate it by hitting high or low on the cue ball, but the more important contact point is on the second rail. We don't want to hit too far up table, because then we have the danger of getting straight. So we're choosing this target for our cue ball. We manipulate the cue ball by adding some right spin to the cue ball. And going this path is very very good because we have a lot of margin for error with our speed because we're going exactly towards the free ball. We ended up in a very nice position. The contact point on the first rail is obviously right next to the free ball. So now we're checking our options. If we're hitting low right on the cue ball, we could go with the cue ball towards this direction. And if we change the point on the cue ball and playing left, we can go to this part of the rail. So now we're looking for the right point on the second rail. And you see, if we hit the second rail here and follow the path of the cue ball, we will end up with a very nice position on the 5 ball. So now I'm visualizing where I want to hit the second rail. Now I'm setting up where I want to hit the cue ball and then which speed I want to hit, I'm visualizing the whole process and shot and then I'm just pulling the trigger and the cue ball should go exactly towards the first rail and then end up in a very nice position on the 5 ball. And now let's get back to our previous example shot. Instead of picking a point on the table here, we're going to pick a point on the rail. This way we will have even more margin for error. From here the cue ball can travel all the way along this path and we still have a decent shot. So the cue ball can stop anywhere on this around 2 feet long path. And this shot is the same principle. It's by the way a very common shot that you have to be able to play. When having new students on my Patreon page for example, I always give them a drill that trains exactly this shot. In this example, I'm showing you the next advantage of using rails. We're picking this point on the second rail and we expect the cue ball to travel along this path.
As you saw, the cue ball hit around half a diamond away from our point on the rail, but it still ended up where we were expecting it to end. And that's because the angles will self-correct the more rails we use. If you wanna know more about that topic, check out my free rail diamond kicking system. Link is in the video description. In this example, we ended up with the wrong angle and have to go around the table. Choosing a point on a rail makes it a lot easier to visualize the shot and to remember the point. Here for example, we wanna hit at the second diamond. In situations like that, it is very important to choose a point on the third rail. We have a lot of margin for error here, yes, but if we don't choose a specific point, we risk scratching into the corner pocket. Here we are using this point on the third rail for the cue ball to hit. And yes, of course, we just could and should have slow rolled the ball in to get position for the 9. Here it's basically the same shot, but we want to hit this point on the third rail now. To pick the right points on the rail, we of course need a good and realistic expectation of the cue ball's path. Then we just have to try to bring the cue ball as close as possible to our point. And as I said, there is margin for error and we don't have to hit the exact point on the rail every time, especially when going more rails. Here it's the same, with the contact on the first two rails we can select the point on the third rail. And even if we were not even close to the points on the rail here, we still ended up with a perfect position on a 9. Here the point on the third rail will lead into the shooting line of the 9 ball. I personally feel really confident with this shot, but some of you might want to hit the rail a little bit higher because of the danger of scratching into the side. With this shot here it's the same, but your goal should be to develop a good cue ball control to benefit from this approach of getting position. So as you saw, choosing a point on the table is a good idea, but in some cases it is required to also choose a point on the rail in order to get to the point on the table. As mentioned, the advantages are that very often we have a higher margin for error regarding speed control. The self-correcting angles also help us to get the right position if we are a little off, of course just if you are using more rails. And it also is a lot easier to visualize a point on the rail, because there either is a diamond, you hit exactly between two diamonds or one third and so on. If you are still watching, I want to take the chance to tell you guys a big thank you. Thanks to the people who always give me a thumbs up and comment under my videos. You help my videos to get more popular here on YouTube. Thanks to the people who like and share my videos and my Facebook posts. And also thank you to all of my patrons who help me to make more videos and to get better gear. Thank you guys. And of course, thanks for watching and thanks to my sponsors. That's it for today. And as always, see you at the next lesson. Take care.